what is it that you need? Because you don't need to talk about this on social media, right? right? Whatever your frustration is, let's talk it out. Maybe they have talked it out, but that kind of thing where people are wonky about AEW or really in AEW or against AEW, you just don't need any more negative press. You don't need people trying to put slings and arrows against the company while you're in the company. Right? Yeah, because the the stuff with with Adam Cole was more fun. You know, yeah. I, I think it was just kind of more fun stuff. Like, oh, how come how come nobody's trying to stop Adam Cole, my boyfriend, from doing this? I'm not there to stop him, but that that was kind of more fun. Along, obviously, the tweet that she sent last night. There's some very real frustrations that she has. But that's the weird part. Like when you look at 2023 from a wrestling fan standpoint, like it's fun. It's good. Like we get Swerve and Jay White on a random Wednesday night. Yes, there's no story, but those two just going out there and doing what they do best. But the cracks in the foundation that we're seeing, I wonder how different they'd be with no social media. Like you mentioned WCW hood where when they were at their peak, were there people saying like, ah, you know, this might not be good because we're not seeing a lot of these backstage links. Like we're not seeing Chris Jericho on Twitter complaining about nitro airtime. So like, I feel like that magnifies things. And that's why everyone's sort of projecting like, Oh, they're going down that WCW path. But from a sheer wrestling standpoint, we know every month, two months, there's going to be a pay-per-view that's going to deliver. We yes. know on Wednesdays and Saturdays, you want to watch most of the show. Like we just watched a three hour raw where at the end we're like, why did we sit through three hours? Like the AEW shows, you're like, all right, there's only a few times you want to hit the fast forward button. So it, that's the weird it, dynamic it, right now. It was the first time in a long time where I made sure I was in my seat for the yeah. start of Raw, and then Randy came out. I'm like, what the? Regretted what? it so much. So yeah. much. Wow. Like, I rushed. I rushed. So the way we do things in my house, me and my wife take turns. Like, and this week was my week for dinner. So I make dinner. I wanted to make sure I had dinner ready to go by 7 o'clock so I could sit down and watch CM Punk come out and deliver that promo that didn't come until 9.55 Central. And it was one of those promos from like 2013, too. Oh, it wasn't like a good one. It wasn't like you shooting on AEW. <laughs> it was just kind of like, I'm the best at this, and I'm the best at that. I'm the best at that microphone. It's just like, wait. We've seen these things recycled over the last year on Twitter, haven't we? Like, like the same kind of slick haired, you know, uh, you know, CM Punk promos. I'm like, boy, that sounds the same as it was last time he was there. Almost like they wrote it for him. <laughs> what? But uh, to, to get back to the AEW point, like, I think obviously she's, I, I would also make the point that I don't know if Drew McIntyre is happy in, in terms right. of the reports that are out there. Like they're as long as you're going to have professional wrestling, guess what? Professional wrestlers are going to be unhappy. That's yeah. just, that's part of the, that's part of the nature of the business. Now airing them publicly, like the one thing that drew, like the reports are drew was not happy, right? Like those are the reports versus drew getting on social media and directly putting it out there. But at the same time, like I, I understand she should not probably do this, but at the same time, I can understand her frustrations, especially if you've been watching the WWE product and the way they've been able to feature their women over, you know, the last how many ever years. And especially the way that Rhea Ripley's featured on Monday Night Raw, especially the way that the women were featured in the pay-per-view on Saturday. Well, but the but problem from day one. Remember, like the first show, like with Pac, where like he hadn't taken a loss since he left WWE, and they were debating how to deal with that. Like when you have all those egos, you get that dynamic. And even to your point, Hood, about the boys booking, I feel like the Bucks have almost gone the opposite direction to where they've hurt themselves. Where it's like, well, we don't want to be the first tag champs. Like we got to lose this match. And it was like, no, you guys should win. And then they're in that weird dynamic. <laughs> 